While discussing Nash equilibrium, we had made a very crucial assumption that all the players are rational and intelligent. Uh, what rationality means is that they are always trying to maximize their own utilities and intelligence means that they understand the rules of the game and they are always going to pick the most optimal thing uh, like the game theorist. So for instance, uh, in, in a game uh, where Nash equilibrium exists, a rational and intelligent player will always find that. Uh, and it has the computational ability to find it and it will play according to that Nash equilibrium. Now we are going to address a different kind of a, a situation where uh, one player might be rational and intelligent but it is not sure whether the other player is also rational and intelligent or not. So there is a certain amount of risk uh, while playing the Nash equilibrium strategy uh, when the other player might not be uh, as intelligent as the current player. So let us look at one example for that. So suppose in this uh, game on the right hand side, uh, player 1 has 3 strategies, player 2 has 2 strategies and it is not very difficult to figure out which one is the Nash equilibrium, essentially B, R is the Nash equilibrium for this game. So the this is giving this uh, utility. Now if, if you uh, assume that the player 2 it is not capable of taking the most intelligent decision, then uh, if it changes from R to L, uh, its, its strategy from R to L, then uh, uh, for player 1, playing B is very risky because it can certainly jump uh, because of that wrong choice of player 2 from 3 to minus 100. How can we handle that? So how can an agent who is unsure about the, the intelligence of the other player uh, still uh, play a strategy and not be uh, super worse off and that is exactly what we are going to discuss in this uh, module it's called the max min strategy so it's something like a worst case optimal choice so if you look at the other strategies so in this particular uh, strategy for player one that is uh, strategy p um, the minimum value uh, of of that player uh, can be minus 100 while if it plays m the minimum value reduces a little bit, uh, the negative value reduces a little bit, goes to minus 10. Uh, so if the other player is unsure and you are not uh, uh, certain whether that player will play uh, uh, according to the most intelligent outcome, then you can imagine that the worst thing is going to happen to you and therefore you are counting uh, how much worse you can, you can get in each of these strategies. So in M you can get uh, as bad as minus 10. But if you look at T, you, you can actually get uh, a much better outcome, which is 1. So which is not as good as the Nash equilibrium, but it is not too bad either for player 1. So that is in some sense uh, averting the risk. If, you, if this player decides that I should play T uh, instead of playing B, because I'm not sure whether the other player is also uh, playing according to the Nash equilibrium, then I can at least guarantee this much amount of outcome, which is uh, this much amount of utility, which is uh, one, uh, and uh, that will be my uh, risk averse choice of. So that is exactly what uh, we mean by a pessimistic estimate. The, the, the agent one is actually doing a pessimistic estimate of, of the other players. So this is what we call the max mean strategy. Uh, you are assuming as if the other players or, or all the other players uh, together is trying to minimize your utility as much as possible and you are trying to pick the action or the strategy that maximizes it. And therefore, you can first look at this uh, uh, this expression, arg uh, this argument uh, max mean uh, from inside out. So first look at the utility here, uh, a specific uh, utility of player i is given by the strategy that it picks and the strategy that all the other players pick. First you look at the worst possible situation, what can happen if you pick a sp specific strategy si, then the worst thing that can happen to you is uh, the minimum of s minus i. And then uh, you look at the strategy which maximizes that minimum value. And that we are going to call the max max min strategy for player i. Now we also can define equivalently the, the max min value, which is essentially nothing but the, the max min, uh, the, the utility uh, that you get at this max min value. 
So you just look at the max over all the strategies of that player and minima over all the strategies of the other players and the utility that the agent i gets that is going to be the uh, uh, max min value which we are going to denote by v uh, lower bar i so just to uh, make sure that this is uh, not v minus i it's v vi lower bar and it is not very difficult to see that the utility uh, in this context uh, that player i will get when it plays this uh, max min strategy uh, it is always going to be uh, at least as much as the max min value so you can always guarantee as player i no matter what is the strategy that has been chosen by the other players you can always guarantee this uh, max min value as your utility so in this example that max min value for player one happens to be one similarly you can find the max min value for player two as well now once we have uh, defined a different um, uh, uh, strategy we'll also have to somehow connect for our own understanding how it compares with the dominant strategies or the pure strategy Nash equilibrium etc and that is what we are going to do uh, so let's look at the max mean uh, and the dominant strategies what are what is the relationship and here is the theorem it says that if si star is a dominant strategy for player i then it is also a max mean strategy for player i so in some sense it is saying that uh, if you are playing a dominant strategy then you can be safe uh, you can be safe that even the other player is uh, not uh, rational and intelligent you can still guarantee uh, the max mean value that you are going to get so that's that's a good news uh, let us try to prove it in a in a little formal way uh, the let me first uh, give you uh, some sort of a uh, intuition of this proof so essentially you are looking at uh, all the um, dominant strategies and you are going to claim that this particular strategy is going to be uh, also max mean strategy so what happens in a dominant strategy so let's uh, look at uh, this step by step so uh, here i am going to uh, uh, give the arguments for strictly dominant strategies but it, the same uh, argument will even follow for weakly dominant strategies just the inequalities will become a little weaker now if si star is a strictly dominant strategy for player i then by the definition of strictly dominant strategy we know that uh, this inequality should hold the strict inequality should hold uh, for all the strategies of the other players that is the definition of uh, uh, a strictly dominant strategy that is if, if the other players are picking some s minus i then for every possible s minus i uh, si star is going to be giving player i a higher utility than any other strategy that that the agent might pick so for any other si prime it is going to be uh, strictly better so if this inequality holds then um, uh, we can define uh, uh, the following thing so we can define uh, a function which uh, takes as input so imagine you are player i and you have fixed a specific strategy si prime now what is the uh, that strategy profile of all the other players that is giving you the minimum utility for that particular choice of si prime so if uh, if you go back to this example suppose uh, you are uh, your si prime was m then what is that strategy profile of the other player in this case there is only one player uh, what is that s minus i that gives the minimum utility to player one and uh, for m if your si prime uh, is m then uh, um, that is minus i uh, minimum that value is actually r while if your si prime is b then it is uh, it is going to be l and so on so that is what we are going to capture so this this particular uh, term that we have written on the left is minus i mean si prime is that uh, uh, minimum strategy profile uh, minimizing strategy profile of all the other players when player i is playing si prime that minimizes the strategy uh, utility of player i right fair enough so this is uh, this is the thing uh, that we have just explained now i know that uh, this is, uh, because this si star is a strictly dominant strategy then it should hold this inequality should hold for every s minus i so even uh, in particular if you look at this si prime and uh, 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 plug plug that particular value so m or uh, b or t whatever it is 
it is always going to be uh, following this strict inequality and this uh, should uh, uh, hold not only for SI prime if you change SI prime what will change is the uh, the value of this particular thing but for that new s minus i mean SI prime also this inequality will hold all right so that is uh, that is a good thing now uh, uh, from this particular part from this particular part we can actually say uh, before going to the the last line uh, we can say that this uh, value so u i uh, if i look at the the value s i prime and s minus i mean s i prime then among all these things because s i prime is uh, strictly greater than this value so s i star is going to be the arg max arg max over all s i primes right for all s i prime that does not belong uh, i mean uh, belongs to this set without this s i star so it is going to be the uh, uh, the maximizer in fact here you can actually make it even larger so it is uh, uh, the arg, ma arg max over all s i's because now you can also put in s i star and you know that that value is going to be uh, maximum so this is uh, just an implication of this inequality here now we can expand that uh, this inner part the inner part of this ui si s minus i mean which is nothing but the minimum right so this this term is uh, what is this term by the definition of uh, s minus i uh, s minus i mean si prime it is just the minimum so uh, uh, this particular term here is just nothing but this utility Right, so this, uh, yeah, so this utility here is essentially can be replaced by this minimum. So I know that SI star is the arg max uh, over this SI and also the minimum over this S minus i, and that is essentially proving that uh, the strategy uh, SI star, which was a strictly dominant strategy for player i, is also a max mean strategy. And you can uh, just do the same exercise for weakly dominant strategies as well. Okay, so let us now go uh, move into the the, uh, the pure strategy Nash equilibrium, and see what relationship does it have uh, with the the max mean value. So now we are not looking at the max mean strategy; we are looking at the max mean value. And this claim says that if you have a pure strategy Nash equilibrium on a, um, a normal form game. Then it must satisfy the following inequality. Uh, if you look at the utility of every player at that Nash equilibrium strategy profile, then it must be at least as much as the max mean value. So by playing a pure strategy Nash equilibrium, you are still safe. Uh, you you uh, will always have uh, the uh, the max mean value that uh, uh, the max mean value uh, that uh, you could have achieved by being pessimistic. So what it means that uh, if the if all the players, so it does not take away that risk factor. If all the other players are also um, rational, then they will uh, perhaps play a, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. And in that pure strategy Nash equilibrium, utility of all the players is going to be guaranteed to be uh, at least as much as the, their uh, max mean value. So how should we go about proving this? So we do it in two steps. The first step is just an observation that uh, if you look at this uh, this particular term, utility of agent i, uh, when player i plays s i and the other players are playing s minus i star, which is the uh, the pure uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium profile for all the other players, then by definition you can uh, by definition of minima you can say that this is uh, this is at least as much as the minimum over all the s minus i's while player i is uh, sticking to this si and uh, this uh, must be true for all si now if you look at the uh, the other thing the second point which is the uh, the, uh, the utility of player i at the nash equilibrium profile uh, then you also know that this inequality should hold and this is by the definition of the pure strategy nash equilibrium if all the other players are uh, still playing the Nash equilibrium profile, then player I will get at least as much as uh, as much utility um, uh, by playing any other strategy uh, in in its Nash equilibrium strategy. Okay, so this in this two inequalities hold. Now what we can show uh, is that you start with this uh, left hand side. Uh, so you, you start with the 
uh, utility on uh, uh, on the left and um, uh, this uh, by definition uh, we have we have already shown this you can also use uh, the uh, the best response strategy in order to best response definition of this of this Nash equilibrium which says that if you are maximizing with respect to the strategy when the other players are playing the Nash equilibrium strategy then your utility will be maximized at the Nash equilibrium so this uh, equality is obvious from the definition of Nash equilibrium. Now what we can, uh, what we uh, uh, know is that uh, this is uh, going to be, so this inequality that I am going to maximize with respect to SI uh, and, the, and we are minimizing with respect to S minus I because the max was already here and uh, uh, this, this inequality is coming from this first inequality here. This is just by the definition of, uh, uh, of minima. We can just replace the second part, this, this utility part, with the minima here. And that's it. Now, now that we have replaced this max and min uh, in, in this sequence, this max mean value is, uh, so max mean, where you are taking the max with respect to that player's uh, strategy and you are picking the minima with respect to the strategies of all the other players, that essentially gives you the max min value for that player. So this is the V lower bar I. So that is exactly what we have uh, we have shown uh, that uh, the utility at the Nash equilibrium is at least, uh, because there is an inequality here, at least as much as the uh, max min value.